This is a little drool bib. It's become quite a popular thing these days for babies to wear. Now the thing you need to know about the drool bib is that it really needs to be a flexible item. They're going to be wearing it for a longer period of time, so making sure that you are not using a thicker fabric on the back is something that I highly recommend. A jersey t-shirt fabric is a really good fabric for a project like this, as well as a waffle fabric, something that is light but can still soak up some drool. And I used snaps on the back of mine, but you can easily use Velcro as well. I walk through everything that you need to know about Velcro versus snaps as well in this tutorial. I will have everything linked and time stamped in the description below. And one more very important thing that you need to know, because different fabrics shrink at different rates, you really need to be pre-washing all of your items because we are mixing fabrics together. All right, I think that's all I have to say. Let's jump on into this tutorial. After choosing the fabric that you want for this project, then make sure that you have Velcro or snaps. And of course, download the free patterns, which I will have linked in the description below. So take the pattern piece and lay it along the folded edge of your cotton fabric, pin it, and then cut out your first pattern piece. Now you can cut out both your front and back fabric using that same method, but because we're working with more flexible loose fabric, I actually find it easier to just take my first cutout pattern piece, lay it right sides together on top of my backing fabric, and then I'll just use my rotary cutter and my ruler to cut around those straight edges. Make sure both pattern pieces are right sides together, pin around the entire thing, and then sew a half inch seam allowance making sure that you leave a three inch opening somewhere on your drool bandana so that you'll be able to turn it right side out. I like to make sure that this opening is in a spot that will end up at the back of the drool bib. Now you'll trim away all of your excess fabric that is near all three points. Then turn your project right side out, push out all three points before bringing it to your iron and giving it a nice press, making sure that you press that open edge inwards, pin across it, and sew a quarter inch seam allowance around the entire drool bib. And then it's time to add some Velcro or snaps to your drool bib to finish it up. If you're new to sewing, I don't recommend the snaps quite yet. Velcro will be just fine. But the one thing you need to know about Velcro is that when you sew into Velcro, you want to be using Velcro that does not have a sticky back. If it has a sticky back, it'll just gum up your needle. So make sure you're buying the correct Velcro. Velcro. I will link to some in the description down below. And then also make sure that the rough side of the Velcro, the side where the hooks are, is being attached faced away from the baby's neck. And then the soft loops of the Velcro can be placed on the side that will be facing towards the baby's neck. That way the baby is still comfortable wearing the bib. If you're interested in adding snaps to your projects, I will have a few different kits linked in the description down below. And if you're really serious about wanting to add snaps to lots of different projects, then I actually recommend just jumping right on in to the cam snap system, which I will also link in the description down below. You will need snaps that are male and female, and then you will need claws to attach these snaps to your project. So this particular clamp that I have here has a rounded edge and a flat edge. And on the flat edge, I will lay my claw with the pointy bits poking upwards, and then I will lay my female bits on the other side with the backing pointed upwards, and then I will clamp it on either side of my fabric, squeezing as tight as I possibly can. The cam snap system is nice because you don't have to use your own hand strength to make sure that your snaps stay in place, but this works just as well. And then on the opposite side, you will need the male snap and you will still add the claw inside your gripper. And then you will squeeze that as tight as you possibly can as well. And you have attached your snaps. I do like to add two snaps to my bibs. That way the bib has a little bit more flexibility with its sizing. And this is what your jewel bib will look like when it's all done. All right. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.